Namaste and good evening. And this little talk is about how the material creation is proof of God's existence. How many times you come across people sometimes say, well, where is the proof of God? Well, how can you show me that God exists? Actually, there's so many ways, but we'll concentrate on just a few. The point of it is, as the Vedic literature progressively explains, the fullest understanding of God is that the absolute truth culminates in the Supreme Person. And all of creation comes from this person, this energy, this aspect that creates everything. And then the material creation is proof of the existence of the Supreme Personality. After all, one of the questions that we can ask is, if God was merely an impersonal void, or great energy or force only, how can the impersonal create the personal? How can a divine energy or force, or a non-entity, give birth to or create entities? How can that without a personality create the innumerable beings that have personalities and characteristics and idiosyncrasies? So, if God was merely a non-entity or without activities, there would be no need for him to create his separated parts and parcels, like us, spirit souls, with whom he could have relationships or loving exchanges. Actually, there would be no need of beings of any kind, in which case there would be no need for a cosmic creation to allow the materially inclined living beings to engage in material relationships or activities. We need to remember that one of the purposes of this creation is to allow the materially conditioned souls the freedom to express their individuality. If this individuality was not an intrinsic aspect of our nature, why would we have the propensity for self-expression, or the need to chase after so many desires? And without that, once again, there would also be no need for a material manifestation, a material creation for us to run around in. In other words, if the ultimate reality was but a void or great white light, or a Brahman only, in which there was no activity, what need would there be for a cosmic creation in which living beings are allowed to express so many desires and activities? To explain further, it is said that variety is the spice of life, and that particular spice or enjoyment is found only in activities. Varieties of activity is the fun of life. Furthermore, activity is generally based on relationships of various kinds, most often with others. So, if we are, were once all one, for example, or all merged into a void, there would, could be no relationships, or nor desires for such, for that matter. So, without individuality, there is no need for relationships or activity, loving exchanges, nor any variety or fun. In such a case, the Lord would be inactive in a spiritual world that offered no variegatedness. There would be there would also be no need for a material creation where so many relationships take place, or where the conditioned souls can chase after their own particular material desires. Basically, everything would be void. Everything comes from a void. There would be no need of anything else but a void. So actually, there would be no need uh, for anything at all. However, we can plainly see all around us that such is not the case. There are innumerable living beings of many varieties of species, all determinedly engaged for self-preservation and expression and the fulfillment of so many desires and sometimes so desperately at any cost. Therefore, the material creation is proof of the existence of God. It is proof of the personal form of the Supreme Being and the nature of his parts and parcels to long for and engage in a variety of activities and loving relationships, the highest of which is to engage in spiritual loving relations with the Supreme Lord Himself. This is our natural constitutional position for which we have been brought into existence. This is the eternal nature of the soul and our real identity. That is why nothing will ever change our natural inclination toward varieties of activities and for individual self-expression and the need to love and be loved. It is but a reflection of the spiritual world. So this will give us a little insight into why we are here, why the material world is created, 
and why obviously the material world itself is but a reflection of what we can also find in the spiritual world, although that is certainly more spiritually oriented and more God-centered. That's the difference. So there's much more information on this line uh, on my website and in, my, in the many books I've written. So please take advantage of it while you can. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope that gives you a little uh, further insight into how to answer these kind of questions or for your own thoughtfulness itself. So thank you very much. Namaste and Jai Shri Krishna.